Hi, Dr. Chen, physical therapist and strength and mobility coach, here to chat with you a little bit about our nervous systems, specifically our parasympathetic versus our sympathetic nervous system, what they are, how they're affected with the lives that we typically live nowadays, what that ends up affecting in our bodies, and then what we can do about it. So this is part one of a three-part series. We are going to talk today about just an introduction to your nervous system, um, what the nervous systems, the difference between parasympathetic and sympathetic are, and we're gonna go through a typical day um, and kind of talk about how that is affecting the way that our bodies are and which state we are in when it comes to parasympathetic versus sympathetic. So let's get started with introducing those. So our nervous system is basically what governs every system in our body. It's what tells all of the other systems what they should be doing. And we have two that are basically going to fight each other for, not really fight each other, but they are going to be either one is active or the other is active. And that is parasympathetic versus sympathetic. So sympathetic nervous system is our fight or flight mode. So that is what we all typically know as the mode of stress. So this is activated and it's, it's primarily activated when something is going to kill us or eat us. And so the goal of our body when we have the system triggered is to prepare our bodies so that we can either fight this thing or we can flee from it, right? Fight or flight. The other nervous system is our parasympathetic nervous system. And when this is more active and our sympathetic is at bay, we are in rest or digest mode. So that is our parasympathetic nervous system. And that is essentially what should always be kind of queen of our bodies unless we are exercising or stimulating this rest or this fight or flight mode on purpose or from life. Um, but most of us don't end up living in rest and digest mode. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So the difference between these, it completely changes what's, what is going on in our body and how our bodies function. So when it comes to our sympathetic nervous system, a lot of things, different things change. Our blood flow starts to go to our muscles to prepare them to be used for fighting or running. And our pupils change, our breathing pattern changes. So we get our shoulders up to our ears, it protects our carotids because I guess those are important. And we start to breathe in our chest to get air in faster. That is beneficial if we are fighting something or if we are running from it. It is not beneficial when our boss is yelling at us. We'll talk about that later. So those are some of the changes that happen. Our brain changes, um, our brain function changes, a lot of different things change. Even our resting tone, so the tightness of a muscle, obviously is going to change because if we are preparing to fight, we wanna have quick reflexes, we wanna be very reactive, and we wanna have a high tone so we are ready to go. Parasympathetic, however, is when we are just kind of resting and calm and we're supposed to be digesting. So more of our blood flow is to our digestive system so we can digest and nourish our bodies and we are kind of in restorative mode. We also have less tone in our muscles because we don't need them to be ready to fight something because we are relaxed. Our pupils change and our breathing changes. Our breathing is no longer here, it is relaxed here and our breathing is now in our bellies where we can get a nice deep inhale low and we can get slow exhales and we are relaxed. I'm sure most of you are sitting here like, wow, that is not me, I don't live like that. And that is why we have this video today. And that is why I made this video because this is what I go through with every patient because this is a very big contributor to things like chronic pain and just not feeling good in your body. So when it comes to our day, let's talk about having a balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic inputs. So inputs are just things that we're going through in our daily lives. We don't necessarily, if we think about a scale, we don't necessarily want this scale to be even, right? So ignore the fact that this is such a great artistic drawing. I knew I was gonna be an artist since I was five, but um, wow, my dream really came true. Um, but anyways, we don't necessarily want balance, right? We actually want a lot of parasympathetic um, activation. So we are actually in more of a calm state than normal. And I'm gonna talk about why we want that, but in the lives we live, most of us really need to just focus on parasympathetic. And because of the lives we live, we actually have to put a lot of active work in parasympathetic mode. So let's talk about that. Let's go through a full day. So most of us live lives where we have to wake up with an alarm. And most alarms are kind of jarring. So we wake up with a jarring alarm and that's already kind of sympathetic, right? So already we're starting with this loud alarm or this obnoxious alarm, or it just doesn't sound great because we're waking up out of a sleep where we're supposed to be asleep. 
So most of us start our day like that. And then we snooze it. So we actually get several alarms going off to trigger our nervous system several times because we don't want to wake up because we probably didn't sleep well because of all of this chronic cycle. Then we grab our phones and maybe we start scrolling through social media because why not? We're already a little late. Might as well just scroll through the social media. We're reading things on the news that are triggering us. We're comparing ourselves to other people that we're seeing on our phones. We haven't even gotten out of our bed or paid attention to our bodies yet. And we're already living in whatever the world is out there. So that is extra triggering. So now we have more sympathetic simulation. Then we get up and we end up going into the kitchen and we go to make our coffee. Coffee is a stimulant and has caffeine in it. That stimulates our body. So there we go. Now we have a whole block of just sympathetic stimulation, upregulating our bodies. And we haven't even left the apartment or the house yet. And then we start to rush around and get ready. We are rushing because we wasted time on social media and we snoozed our alarm a bunch. So now we're rushing around and we're running out to work and something spills or we run into something or we're mad because something didn't go our way this morning probably because we didn't prep and then we have to rush to get our lunch because we didn't eat, make it the night before. And now we're just rushing around to get to the car. Pre-pandemic for most of us, but we're gonna pretend like it's a normal day. Maybe you're just rushing into your office at your house, but we're rushing to get into the car, right? So rushing is stimulating your nervous system. Now we are in the car and we have to drive through traffic and traffic sucks and people are cutting you off and you're pissed. You just turn on some loud music and you're just angry because traffic sucks and you don't really want to go to your job and you don't like your job. And now we finally get to your job and you really don't want to sit there and go to your job, but you open the door, you sit down and you just open your emails and it's just all these emails. You immediately get pissed and somebody comes up to you while you're trying to get your tasks done and they ask you to do something and you get mad that they're asking you because that's not your job, but you do it anyways because you don't know how to set boundaries. So now we are so stressed because we don't know how to set boundaries and because we hate our job and because we have so many emails. And so we, we work away, people keep asking us to interrupt. Next thing we know, it's lunchtime. So we sat at our computer desk for all day and then we, we have lunch. And you just decide to work through lunch, but you're tired. So you actually decide to go get a coffee. So now you're just gonna work through lunch. So you have nothing happening except for, uh, we're gonna drink more coffee at noon, one o'clock in the afternoon. Upregulate your nervous system, get you through the rest of the day. Now it is noon, we've had lunch. We are through the day and you almost have a whole entire block full of sympathetic nervous system simulation. We haven't done anything to talk to our parasympathetic nervous system to kind of bring us back over to this state, right? So if we are thinking about this as like a tug of war, we have just yanked this all over here and now it's just, we're just living in sympathetic mode. Now you can probably see, wow, no wonder I feel stressed all the time. No wonder my neck is tight all the time. No wonder my back hurts. I just don't feel good. I'm cranky. It's because that's the life we're living. Now, I will say there is a lot we can do to work on this. I'm going to go through this day again. We're going to go through it with what would look like a little bit more parasympathetic nervous system simulation in a more realistic way because you can't quit your job if you hate it. Maybe you can. Um, but right now, we need some things for you to work on, right? And that's what... Uh, video three is going to be, but for now, I'm just going to go through some really basic things. So let's erase this. Let's go back through that day and let's talk about a day where we're living in more parasympathetic state. A more parasympathetic state is going to be waking up with a little bit more of a calm alarm, right? So now we have just a little sliver of sympathetic nervous system. I would still say waking up with an alarm is a little sympathetic, uh, depending on who you are, but most of the time it is. So just a little bit less than normal. Maybe instead of snoozing it because you're actually getting good sleep at night or because you're going to do the things you know you need to do to take care of yourself and you know that snoozing is not really going to be that beneficial. You instead just turn your alarm off and instead of grabbing your phone, you take two deep breaths in through your body. You just focus on paying attention to your body. You wake up and you take two deep breaths. That's it. That is already slow exhales, by the way already bringing you into a parasympathetic mode. See how we did that? We just combated the waking up with a couple deep breaths and relaxation. Now your thoughts are already like, I gotta grab my phone and go through it. Maybe instead of going through your phone, you decide not to and you decide, I'm gonna take charge of my day. I'm in control of a lot of my body. I'm in control of more than I think. Your brain's gonna fight this when you start doing that, by the way. You gotta fight it. It's something that if you don't do this on a regular basis and kind of rein in your thoughts, you're not going to be good at it and it's a skill so it takes practice and practice and practice and effort and nobody likes to do it but it's going to happen because you care and it'll get better so 
instead of deciding I hate my job or don't want to be awake, you're just like, you're going to be calm. You're just going to be like, I'm going to take control of what I can today. I'm going to let everything else go. So then we wake up. Maybe you go to make coffee, which is okay because most of us like coffee. So you're going to drink coffee, right? So that's going to be a little more stimulating. But you know what? You could also just drink decaf. Um, but while your coffee's brewing, that's doing nothing. <laughs> while your coffee is brewing, you're going to do cars. Now, if you don't know what cars are, go check our other videos out there. Daily movement routine, less than 10 minutes, head to toe, taking your body through its full ranges of motion just to keep your joints healthy. So now you're going to do cars and they're, they're restorative. They feel great. You're taking care of your body. You're doing something for you. You haven't looked at your phone because you're not, you don't care about what's happening in the news in the world right now. Your job is taking care of you. So cars, daily movement routine while your coffee is brewing. Hashtag coffee and cars. Check it out. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so now you're more parasympathetic. Then we are going to get ready, right? So we're going to get ready. We're not rushed. This is pretty neutral. We're just getting our clothes on. Our brain's probably going to go do this thing of I don't remember the work, whatever. Your job is to keep reining it in, right? Every time you start to feel like you're rushed, you pull back and you say, what am I rushing for? I have plenty of time. And if I don't, what's the worst that's going to happen? So rushing is not going to bring any extra, like one to two seconds, it's really not going to bring that much. So you rushing is just bringing yourself more into sympathetic mode. So you're not doing that. You're going to fight it. You get into your car and instead of turning on the music and just peeling out because you're all rushed, you let your car sit for a minute. You take another couple of deep breaths and you put on something that is nice podcast maybe where you can learn something that has nothing to do with work. Maybe it's something that's really calm and relaxing music. Maybe you just roll down the windows. You don't listen to anything except the outside and the whole drive, your brain is going to want to go to work and think about how you have work and you're miserable, but you're not at work. You're going to take those 20 to 30 minutes and just relax. Let yourself be where you are now because that is the only place where you're not at work, right? So don't give that moment to work already. You're going to take control of it. And people are going to cut you off and you're going to be like, wow, they must not be having that great of a day. I'm going to just let it go because otherwise you're just triggering your sympathetic nervous system. That's not helping you. That's not helping anybody. So you're actually having a relaxing drive, right? So now we are back here. We get to work and as you open the door, you tell yourself, I'm going to set boundaries and I'm in control of my day. Again, notice how many times we have to remind ourselves of this because our brain is not going to believe it at first. You will eventually. You really have to embody it. You get into work, you start to look at your emails and you zoom out for a minute and you say, okay, what things do I need to do first? Do we need to just answer emails? And then somebody's going to come, you know, that person's going to come ask you questions and ask you to do something that's not your job. And instead of blowing up and getting mad or triggering, getting triggered because they're asking you, you're going to say uh, something very polite about how that's not your job. You're going to help them figure something out or you're just going to tell them to figure it out. And you're going to go back to doing what is your job. And it's going to be uncomfortable for them, uncomfortable for you if you're a people pleaser, but you're going to set a boundary and it's actually going to help you. That is keeping you more in sympathetic, a parasympathetic nervous system state, right? Set a boundary. That feels amazing. Wow. Okay. Let it go. Gone. Done. Now you're working through your day and you took a minute to organize yourself and you have an alarm set on your phone that every hour you're going to get up and do cars. You're going to get up and do a lap around your office, or you're just going to sit there or stand up and move around and do two deep breaths slow exhales as low as inhales as you can and slow exhales maybe even inhale as low as you can pause and very slow exhales just two of them that's it nothing crazy now you're bringing yourself into more parasympathetic state because you are focusing on your body every single hour you're not ignoring it and now lunchtime comes and you are taking your lunch break you are going to take your lunch and you're going to go outside you're going to take your lunch, you're going to put it somewhere that's enjoyable, or you're going to take your lunch and walk outside. You're going to eat your lunch when you can, but you're going to go for a walk or something that moves your body or feels good. Those are all restorative practices. Taking time away from a screen because the screen is going to trigger some of the uh, sympathetic nervous system breathing stuff. Taking time away from work, taking time for you. That 30 minutes is for you. Don't let it be for anybody else. So now you're a little bit more parasympathetic because you took the time. Now, I know some people are saying, wow, that's not possible. If you're going to let your brain take over, then this isn't going to work for you. But you have more control of those thoughts than you think. Now it is lunchtime, and we've had barely a corner full of sympathetic, and we have way more parasympathetic activation. So now we are much closer to being grounded, and you have the rest of the day and the evening to continue filling that, to bring yourself back into a grounded state, so that when you come home and you go to bed, you actually feel like you can relax and you get a good sleep, and then we don't go back into that cycle again. So... 
Hopefully that gives you some insight on what the difference is between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system stuff. Next video, I'm going to show how I explain to you how this affects your body, what this has to do with how you feel. And then in video three, we're going to go through more tangible ways for you to control and take care of your parasympathetic nervous system so that you are not in such a sympathetic reactive state. And we are going to go through all of those in the next two videos. So stay tuned for videos two and three. If this was helpful, give it a like, comment below what you learned or what you liked about it and give us a follow or subscribe if you want to make sure you see the next two videos. And I hope this was helpful for you and maybe you can start implementing some of this in your daily life um, and then start to see some of the rewards and more will happen in the next two videos. So I will see you in videos two and three.